Good day, Gretels. Welcome to this final lesson on organic molecules for this week. In this lesson, we're going to learn something very important, which is how to name branch hydrocarbons and the halo alkanes. It is strictly not in the curriculum in the sense that they weren't listed in the curriculum, but it isn't funny enough in the exam guidelines and it will be in the exams. You need to know how to name your branch hydrocarbons and halo alkanes. <laughs> Welcome grade 12s to this session on how to name hydrocarbons that have branched chains or substituted halogens. We have looked at the basic rules for naming the alkanes. Now let's go to a mirror to find out how to name more complex hydrocarbons. In this lesson, we'll examine some special examples of hydrocarbons that have branches. We'll see how branches can form and how to name these molecules. We'll also explain how other atoms, like the halogens, can be joined onto organic structures. To start with, we'll see what makes a carbon molecule saturated. We've seen how a long chain of carbon atoms often consists of only carbon and hydrogen, something like this. Every carbon is joined to another carbon or to a hydrogen atom. This is a saturated carbon molecule because there are no double or triple bonds. Saturated carbon molecules like this one can also bond many times to other carbon molecules. That means that one carbon can join onto another chain and make a branch. Let me show you what I mean. A carbon atom can join onto itself to make a straight chain. However, it has space to join onto more carbon instead of hydrogen to start new chains or branches like those of a tree. The longest chain is like the trunk of the tree. The longest chain in a molecule is often called the backbone or parent molecule. Fortunately, we use virtually the same naming principles for all organic molecules. We call carbon branches alkyl functional groups. They are chains just like the alkanes and they substitute or replace a hydrogen atom on the backbone. You may think that this makes naming more difficult, but it doesn't. The names of these branches or alkyl groups are found by counting the carbon atoms in the branch. Here, methane is used as a branch, so it is called methyl. If ethane is used as the branch, it becomes ethyl. If pentane is used as the branch, it becomes pentyl, and so on. The only difference between an alkane and an alkyl branch is that branches end their names in YL in place of ANE. These alkyl groups can occur anywhere on a molecule, so we must number the carbon atoms, unless they are already numbered because of a double or triple bond. Let's name this molecule. It's an alkane with a branch on it. It is easy to see from this diagram that the parent molecule is an alkane because there are only single bonds between the carbon atoms. Here, we can see the longest carbon chain. It has six carbon atoms in it and is therefore called hexane. It's useful to circle the backbone of the molecule to see the parent molecule. Now, look outside the circle to see if there is a branch. Yes, it's easy to see that there is a branch that consists of two carbon atoms. Can you name this branch? If you said that it is an ethyl group, you'd be right. Remember that alkyl groups are alkanes which have been used as branches. Their names change from ane to ile. Ethane becomes ethyl when it is a branch on a bigger molecule. 
we must number the branched molecule or backbone from the side closest to the first branch so that ethyl group is on the lowest possible position on the chain. Here we can see that the ethyl group is on the third carbon atom. This tells us there is a 3 ethyl with 3 showing the position and ethyl indicating the name of the branch. Putting the entire name together makes this 3-ethylhexane. Notice how we add the alkyl groups to the beginning of the names of hydrocarbons. The number indicates where the branch is located. Let's summarize the naming of branched hydrocarbons. We start to name hydrocarbons by finding and naming the longest chain of carbon atoms. This is called the backbone or parent molecule. Then we name the alkyl groups or branch by the number of carbon atoms it contained. Finally, we number the backbone or parent molecule to tell us where the branch is. When we put the parts of the name together, we place the number first, then the alkyl group, followed by the backbone. Sure, that's a lot to remember, but it's always easier to remember when we try it a few times. Try to name this molecule. Take your time when naming it, and remember to run through the steps in your mind as you do this. I'm sure you did well. Let's confirm your answer. We see that the parent molecule, or backbone, is five carbon atoms long, so it's called pentane. We can also see a single carbon branch, which must be called methyl, on the third carbon atom of pentane. Altogether, that makes this molecule 3-methylpentane. Well done. Now we know how to name all hydrocarbons. Whether they have branches, double or triple bonds, we have a standard way of naming these organic molecules. I hope you get lots of practice on how to name these different branched hydrocarbons. Now we will look at hydrocarbons where one or more of the hydrogen atoms is replaced with a halogen atom. Have a look at one chloropropane and two bromopentane as well as iodomethane. There's something interesting about all these molecules. I wonder if you can see it. Notice that one chloropropane contains chlorine and two bromopentane has bromine in it. And here we see that there is iodine in iodomethane. I'm sure you could see that all these molecules contain a halogen. This means that they all have atoms from the group 7 set of elements attached to them. We call these types of hydrocarbons haloalkanes. We also find halogens attached to alkenes to make haloalkenes and to alkynes to form haloalkynes. But let's keep it simple for now and try to name some haloalkanes. Here's a very small haloalkane. I'm sure that you can see that it is only one carbon atom long and has an iodine atom joined onto it in place of a hydrogen. As with any organic molecule, we look for the backbone or parent molecule by counting the longest carbon chain. Lucky for us, that's only one. So this backbone must be methane. To name the functional group containing a halogen, we use only the first part of its name and end with the sound O. That means iodine becomes iodo and joins onto the front part of the name. This is therefore iodomethane. To name the other halogens, we use the same approach. The words fluoro, chloro, bromo, and iodo all show us that there is a halogen joined onto the hydrocarbon backbone or parent molecule. Let us try to name another one. Remember to follow the naming steps. Backbone first and then functional groups later. 
Here we can see a molecule with three carbon atoms in its backbone and a chlorine atom attached to the first carbon. Can you name it? The backbone is propane because of the three carbon atoms we see joined to each other. The chlorine atom can be on more than one place. This means that we have to number the carbons. The chlorine atom is on the first carbon atom in the chain, making this one chloropropane. You're getting good at this. Now, let's see what happens when there are two of the same functional groups. Here is a molecule five carbon atoms long, with two fluorine atoms on it. Can you work out what its name is? Let's check carefully. The backbone is pentane, but how do we indicate that there are two fluorine atoms? The answer is simple. We use the same method we did before, but we add in a prefix to the name. The prefix di means two, tri means three, and tetra means four. So we use the prefix di in front of the term fluoro to show that there are two fluorines. Now we must remember to number the carbon atoms and assign a living address to each fluorine atom. The first fluorine atom is on the first carbon and the second fluorine is on carbon number four. So we write 1,4 difluoropentane. We call this 1,4-difluoropentane. Notice that the numbers are separated by a comma and that there is a dash after the number before the first letter. Also note, the name is written as one word. You may be thinking that you could have numbered differently and so got a different name. Here's a tip for numbering the carbon atoms if there are no double or triple bonds in the structure. Always number the carbon atoms so that the numbers add up to the lowest possible number. This molecule could be incorrectly numbered as 2,5-difluoropentane, but 2 plus 5 is 7, and 1 plus 4 is 5 making this the correct numbering system to use. Let's see what happens when we use multiple halo functional groups on the same structure. Here we have a molecule with a bromo group and a chloro group on it. If we look for the name of the backbone, it is easy to identify it as butane. We can also see that numbering from the left side will give us a 1-2 pattern. This is better than a 2 plus 3. We place the names of the functional groups alphabetically. So, in this molecule, first bromo and then chloro. So this is 2-bromo, 1-chlorobutane. We must remember to separate the words from numbers using a dash each time. We've now seen quite a few examples of how organic structures can be changed. In this lesson, we concentrated on changing shape and types of atoms in molecules. These kinds of structural changes also change the way molecules behave and interact with the world around them. Let's find out how we find these unique molecules in the world around us. Branched hydrocarbons are used widely in fuels such as petrol. I've asked our organic chemist, Philip, to explain how branched hydrocarbons affect petrol performance. Good, thanks. Can I please have 100 rand of 93 and added fuel? All right. Hi, Amira. I'm here at the petrol station checking on some of the octane ratings of the petrols for our vehicles. I've had to choose between 93 and 95 octane fuels. These are the choices I have if I want to choose unleaded fuel. It's good to do this because some of the pollutants in leaded fuel are very harmful. I use 93 unleaded fuel in this car. Thank right, you. Thank you, my man. Bye.
The performance of mixed hydrocarbons in petrol is compared to branched isomers of octane. The molecule most often used as a standard is 224 trimethylpentane. An octane rating of 100 is achieved if this fuel mixture burns at 100% of the rate of this compound. A fuel mixture that burns at 93% of the rate of 224 trimethylpentane will therefore have an octane rating of 93. Thanks, Amira and Philip. I don't think I'll be asking for 224 trimethylpentane next time I fill up with petrol. Do you know the rule when two hydrogen atoms are replaced with two different halides? This molecule is not 2-chloro-3-bromobutane. We name the halides in alphabetical order. So this is 2-bromo-3-chlorobutane. Grade 12s, I hope you now have a better understanding of how we name both the branched alkanes and the alkyl halides.